Hello folks, welcome to this week's weekly forecast. It's Monday, the 5th of July. It's Independence Day in the US. That basically means the financial markets are pretty much closed. However, there is some market movements going on at the moment, basically on the heels of what happened last week. So last week, we had the all-important non-farm payroll release. That's basically the job numbers out of the state. It's a very important number because it gives us a clue on what the state of the economy is all about. Strong numbers basically means the economy is looking strong. That basically means it's inflationary. It basically means that the central bank may have pressure on it to put up interest rates. And normally where interest rates go, the currency should follow. So we always look at these data releases, in particular, the non-farm payroll release. And it was indeed a mixed bag of results. The numbers came in quite uh, quite strong up there, 800,000 or so. Uh, but the other data, the inflationary data, the average earnings and so forth, pretty much in line, but lower on revisions as well. So a bit of a mixed bag. But interestingly enough, the dollar didn't really like it. The dollar has basically been following the 10-year yield lower. The dollar was trading pretty strong into the release, but since the release, it's been trading from the back foot. So let's have a quick look at exactly what it is doing at the moment. This is the momentum meter. Um, I don't know how anyone can trade the currency markets without one of these. Of course, you can access this. If you come over to the forexsignal.com website, you can have it absolutely free. Basically tells me what's going on in the uh, currency markets at a given time. Unfortunately, it doesn't predict the future, but as trend followers, I always like to buy the strong currencies and sell the weak currencies. This green line here, I've aptly called it green because of the greenback. That is the US dollar. As you can see, the US dollar was quite strong into the numbers and then came back uh, lower as we're seeing at the moment. So the US dollar uh, at the time of recording is trading uh, to the downside. Also interesting enough here, uh, you'll see the Canadian dollar. This is the purple line. That's coming lower as well. Uh, that's all based on what's going on there at OPEC. That's the, um, the oil uh, meetings that's going on at the moment. And there's basically a little bit of uncertainty about production costs. Uh, production uh, output and so forth how it's going to go so at the moment they're thinking maybe that there's going to be an increase in production uh, increase in output which could be um, uh, have a negative effect on the loonie which of course is heavily dependent um, uh, heavily related to oil prices clearly because uh, Canada is a big exporter of oil so we've got the pound. Pound's hitting the week off with a good tone. It's one of the strongest currencies this morning. We've had a decent round of PMI data out as well. So pound is looking stronger. Aussie's looking pretty flat. That's there in the middle. That's the orange line. Of course, we've got um, RBA rate decision later this week. Unlikely to move rates, but we're always looking at the follow-on statement to see uh, if there are any clues there, what the central bankers are thinking, what Lowe's thinking in terms of going forward. The euro is down there in the doldrums. The euro is back down there with... Uh, the dollar at the moment. Seeing a bit of strength coming into the uh, into the end. Gosh, this looks like a weather forecast, doesn't it? A bit of strength coming into the um, uh, into the end at the moment. So maybe we're looking to get on that bandwagon as well. So let's have a look at what we're looking at this week. So Aussie against the US dollar. As I mentioned there, US dollar is looking weak. Aussie is looking strong. We're looking for a push up higher now. A break of this key level of um, resistance could indeed indicate that this wants to move back on up all the way up to maybe uh, 0.78. We've actually got quite a... Uh, good little pattern forming here at the bottom of this downtrend. I'll show you when I get onto the charts in a moment in more detail, but we're seeing um, so a bit of a, a reversal pattern um, coming in there, maybe reversing that trend. So we're looking at potentially an Aussie US dollar long trade. But remember, don't take these trades blindly and go off and trade them. You need to do your own analysis and make sure you apply your own strategy. Just taking the trade because of my bias, it's a sure, fast way to the poorhouse. Uh, CAD yen. CAD yen is looking potentially now as we are in a downtrend. We're bouncing off these levels of trend line resistance, coming up to supply and demand resistance as well. A bit more supply just above here at the moment. Seeing some uh, bearish price action on the four hour chart could indicate that this wants to uh, drive back down lower as well. As I showed you on the momentum meter a moment ago, the CAD is looking weak because of the OPEC um, outcome uh, this week. We've got the yen string, uh, strengthening up as well. Well, um, yen, safe haven currency, stocks are on all-time highs at the moment, and there is a potential for them to have a, a minor reversal, which, of course, is going to be good for the Japanese yen. 
I'm looking at a pound. I want to get long the pound at some point this week, so I'm going to be looking at buying the pound against a softer currency. Pound against the CAD most probably is a play. Uh, I've mentioned the CAD a few times already. So I'm looking at the pound CAD long um, and also looking at uh, a gold uh, long as well. Gold and dollar normally move in opposite directions because it's priced in dollars. Uh, more recently, the last uh, week or so, interestingly enough, dollar's been grinding higher but so has gold. Gold's now today, including today, on the fourth consecutive up day uh, for gold, and the US dollar has had um, some strength building into it as well, apart from the pullback we're seeing in uh, since NFP, non-farm payroll. That basically means there is momentum building uh, in the yellow metal, um, possibly, possibly seeing some strength coming in to uh, gold. Maybe as stocks reach these highs, maybe there's a bit of positioning going on there for a bit of safe haven, just in case the uh, stocks want to pull back. So look Looking at a long gold trade as well. Right, we'll jump onto the charts now. Have a look at a couple of these um, and look at the economic calendar uh, for the week ahead. Come on, let's go. Okay, so let's have a quick look here at the uh, Australian dollar against the US dollar. Now, this is one that I mentioned here on the top picks uh, for this week. What I'm looking at here is this downtrend that we've been seeing in play pretty much really since the beginning of May. But we've come into a level of support. Now, we never know when we're trading the markets whether support is going to hold or whether resistance is going to hold. But you need to get clues from price action from the market to tell us is that level being respected. And I do that normally in the form of very simple price action patterns. Bullish engulfers, bearish engulfers. That's when basically the, the last candle fully engulfs the previous candle and so forth. And what we're seeing here, we came down into this level of previous resistance. You know, in financial markets, looking at charts, often previous resistance becomes support and previous support becomes resistance as buyers turn into sellers and sellers turn into buyers. It's just human behavior. So we've basically seen this bullish reversal pattern here now at this level of support. We took out last week's low, um, looking as though it was going to challenge this level of support and maybe break through but no friday's candle fully engulfed this candle now indicating that a potential reversal is in play now we do teach this strategy inside the trading room here at forexsignals.com it's called the naked day trading strategy uh, looking at pure price next level of resistance will be at the next uh, will be our next um sorry, uh, target level and then of course uh, further up again we'll see 78 as the next level this could easily put in a v-shaped reversal up to this level and this is an indication indeed that that indeed uh, wants to um uh, wants to happen so we'll see how that one plays out that's the australian dollar for p potential uh, v-shaped reversal keep an eye on it Okay, so let's quickly take a look at the dollar against the Japanese yen. This is the daily chart. You can see we have been in a solid uptrend. And we basically put in some price action, creating what you could consider to be a double top, triple top, bouncing off it a few times here on the daily. Last um, tail end of last week, we saw a breakthrough of this all important resistance zone. But the momentum didn't carry this pair up. And now we're seeing uh, this bearish pattern here, this bearish reversal pattern, having broken through that level of resistance, market don't, doesn't seem to like it. The potential for this now is for it to roll back and have a correction, maybe back down to the 108.50 uh, zone. So keeping an eye on that now, that is a clear indication of price rejection at a level of resistance. So we'll be looking at that. Dollar is looking all the week, as I mentioned, since the non-farm payroll and the yen now is showing some bid momentum as well, maybe as the safe haven currency, um, low yielding currency is going to perform better when the markets now are so risk on, maybe preempting a drop in the stocks. So look at possibly a reversal for the uh, dollar against the Japanese yen. Right now, let's have a look at the economic calendar to see what's out this week, what's going to drive the markets. Okay, so head over to the forexsignals.com website, scroll down to the bottom, and you will see here we have the economic calendar click on economic calendar and it brings you up the um, events that we need to keep um, an eye out for the forthcoming week okay so i like to have it out looking over the next seven days okay so the way to read this as you know is if uh, if you see a red um impact um tag down here on the right hand side that basically means it's a high impact news it's likely to have a bigger impact on the markets not a very busy week this week uh for the um uh for the data releases we've basically got the fomc out in the us 
uh, which is going to be on the 7th of July. So we need to pay attention to that. FOMC minutes basically tells us uh, what they discussed at their last policy meeting. Um, were they more hawkish or were they more dovish? What the things they are uh, that they are focusing on it gives us clues on to what uh, may happen to interest rates uh, further down the line. OK, so this is the economic calendar that uh, you can access by going to the ForexSignals.com website. Scroll down to the bottom, you'll see it there, economic calendar. Really important, I think, that you use something like this in your trading. A, maybe make some money out of it because there are some money-making opportunities. Um, but more importantly, you don't get caught out and take a trade just ahead of a big announcement. The last thing you want to do is take the trade, book the trade, and see you get stopped out because a big economic release has just been announced. So a bit of a quiet week lined up for us here uh, this week. Normally is after non-farm payroll. Uh, biggest um, event over the next uh, 24 hours will be the RBA interest rate decision. That's when the Reserve Bank of Australia decide on interest rates. Unlikely to move interest rates, um, but it's always the follow-on statement that we pay particular attention to. Um, you see here the way to read this. Um, this is the estimate. That's the previous. Um, and then when the actual comes out, if it deviates much from the uh, estimate, then that's uh, when the markets could move. If you're not sure on uh, how important a particular release is, just look down here at the impact. Anything with red, that's high impact news. It's likely to have a bigger impact on the markets than something here in green that is likely to have a lesser impact. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we get this feed, but it says the PMI data that came out earlier today out of the Eurozone puts that as medium. I actually think that's really quite high impact um, myself. But um, anyway, medium impact news, uh, PMI data quite a lot stronger than expected. The Euro is showing signs of some strength since this was released. Uh, just a few hours ago. Of course, we've got uh, retail sales out uh, tomorrow in the Eurozone, so we will be paying particular attention to that. It is a high impact news Euro retail sales year on year. It gives us clues on what people are doing with their money. Are they out there spending money on the high street? If they're out there spending money, likely that inflation price pressures will be uh, going to the upside, and that basically means central banks may have to consider moving interest rates. It's an early indication of where interest rates may go. So keep an eye on the Euro um, um, Eurozone retail sales. I'd like to take out the next seven days. Then it is pretty quiet. Pretty quiet, really, until FOMC uh, later on in the week. FOMC minutes, it's basically... Um, the uh, when the Fed meet, they decide on uh, interest rates, but then they minute the meeting and you get to know uh, what was discussed in that meeting. So that's basically coming out um, on the uh, 7th of July. Again, high impact news. Uh, then we have later on in the week, we've got uh, Canadian employment. I think that's the biggest event really uh, for the rest of the week, Canada employment. Uh, there it is, quite often they come out at the same time as the US unemployment, but this time there's a week difference. Uh, so again, the next high impact news. So if you're trading the Canadian dollar this week, you need to pay attention to that because historically it does indeed move the loonie. And the loonie is gonna be affected by OPEC as well this week, oil prices. So lots to uh, think about there if you're trading the CAD this week. So quite a quiet week on the economic front, but do pay attention to the um, Reserve Bank of Australia, the FOMC minutes, Canadian unemployment, and of course, uh, Eurozone uh, retail sales. Okay, hope you found that useful. Don't forget you can subscribe to the channel if you don't already do so here on YouTube and hit that notification. That way you'll be notified the next uh, time we release uh, one of these videos, which as you know now is uh, twice a week. Um, as you know, we are streaming live around the clock uh, up to six times a day, uh, five days a week. If you want to take part in that, get a bit of an insight to what we're looking at uh, for the day ahead, a whole vibrant community of traders all getting involved in that as well. You can do so by coming over to the forexsignals.com uh, website you take out a trial if you wish to see what it's all about if you don't want to stay then you don't have to pay nothing to lose and i think everything to gain if that is not your thing not a problem i'll see you next week and have a good week